Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you hear me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Welcome. Welcome to uh, Sunday, morning, Sunday morning worship. Uh, good to see all your smiling faces. Uh, one, one thing I want to share before we, we move on. Uh, with all, everything going on with this coronavirus, uh, with the numbers increasing and whatnot, uh, like I shared earlier with the, with the core of uh, JCC Maui, is, uh, we're not fearful, amen? We're not fearful. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, amen? So we want to do our best to comply with, uh, you know, little codes and restrictions. We don't want to be clustering. So like you see, we moved our tents back. And we want to do our best to comply with the rules and the regulations. We love seeing your faces every Sunday. So we want to do what we can do to make sure we can keep on doing it. Amen. So whichever way you want to greet, fist bumps, whatever it is, you want to wear your mask. It's totally entirely up to you, but we want to make sure if they come and check us out, that they see good stuff happening here, that they see people not reckless and loose, but people that are mindful of not only what's going on in our community, but mindful of each other and to the authorities. So we love you guys. Welcome. I'm going to hand the mic over to Brother Bully Kamai. He's going to give us an exhortation. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Amen, church. Um, I'm glad I can be in the house of God and worshiping and praising God with all you folks. Today I'll be reading from the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. It's a familiar passage. I pray you open up your mind and your heart to the reading of God's word. In verse 24 it says, For God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to refresh your memory and encourage you how praise and worship plays a big part in our service to God. Number one, when we praise and worship, we are focusing on God to give us strength to get through the tough times in our life, to help us overcome temptation, casting all our fears and worries and doubts in his hands. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Point, point number two, I want to say, worship increases our understanding of God. There's a song that we were singing back at my home church. It goes, in everything, give God thanks. In the good times, praise his name. In the bad times, we have to do the same. In everything, give the king of kings all the praise. Although we sang that song many of times, I didn't understand the meaning of it until I surrendered my life to God. Yes, it's easy to praise God when things are going good. But how about when things are going bad? Can you still bring that same energy of praise? Brothers and sisters, let me remind you, we will face adversity in this walk with Christ. But if we can praise God throughout all circumstances, then we will understand how much God means to us. Putting our faith and guide and trust in Him to guide us through to all circumstances. Point number three, when we worship, it helps build our confidence in God. It helps us increase our faith in Him. Jesus said, Acts, and you shall receive. Brothers and sisters, want to be blessed? Worship. You want spiritual battles to be won? Worship. You want, you want doors to open? Worship. Spiritual bondage to be broken, worship. Healing to take place, worship. Deliverance from drugs and alcohol, worship. A happy relationship with family, worship. You want to be financially free from bondage, worship. Free from depressions, fear, and anxiety, we need to worship. When we worship both physically and spiritually, breakthroughs will happen in our lives. In Psalms 111, it says, Praise ye the Lord. I'll praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. I count it a privilege to, and opportunity to worship the King. I encourage you to not be ashamed. I always like to close my eyes, lifting my hands in surrender and meditating during praise and worship, thinking how I'll be in heaven while worshiping the King. What I find cool about being in this, in this area, Yale Valley, is yes, it's beautiful. But in the Old Testament, before the temple was built, God's present, the Ark of the Covenant, was in the tabernacle. Do you know the tabernacle was a tent? The high priest would offer blood sacrifice to cover the sins of the Israelites. But when Jesus died, rose again, and ascended back to heaven, the old covenant was abolished. Because Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice, 
because his blood set us free. We now can bring a different kind of sacrifice, a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving for all he has done for us. I love you, church. I pray we praise and worship, and it can grow and increase every day of our lives because God inhabits all the praise. God bless. Hosanna, God. We cry out, Hosanna, because you are the one who saves. You save us from sin. You save us from death, God. And we thank you this morning, and we praise you because you are worthy to be praised. Let's sing. Praise is rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Let's go back to the top. Praise is rising. Jesus. Hear the 
God. Yes, we call you Hosanna because you are the one who saves. No one else, nothing else can save us, God. You are a great God. There is none like you. None who can do what you do. You are for us, and if you are for us, what can be against us, God? You're a great God, and we praise you. God is with us. 
And what, what could come against us? How good are you? So Lord, you are good. so holy. So holy that even when, even when we are rewarded the crowns, we want to lay them back at your feet. Yes, so let's continue to worship, worship, and worship him and call out, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Let's lay everything we have down at his feet. Because he is so good. He is a great God. Amen. So let's continue to worship. Holy, holy, holy. 
Can we give another hand for our praise and worship? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like Bully said, that's where it starts. Amen. Praise and worship. Let's give our worship to the Lord. Amen. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Joyful Community Church. <laughs> nice to see all your faces again. We've been gone a while, but welcome. <laughs> We missed you all while we were on quarantine. <laughs> Anyways, so if you're a visitor, you are now family, no longer a visitor. <laughs> and we have our bathrooms in that little box back there and a little wash station to wash your hands after. And please no wandering around property during service. And... And also, we'll be replaying this service on Facebook and YouTube at 5.30 today. I, I know we have this whole COVID thing and a lot of people want to stay home. But there's nothing like being in the presence, in person. And I know Bishop is away, but that doesn't mean you got to stay away too. <laughs> so I know we have a great speaker today, Pastor Aubrey. Yes. But again, that doesn't mean stay home. <laughs> Welcome to our Joyful Community Church Maui Facebook Watch Party. As we prepare our hearts for tithes and offering, we'd like to thank you for giving to Joyful Community Church. You may participate in this part of worship in several ways. By sending your check or money order to Joyful Community Church, P.O. Box 791, Wailuku, Hawaii, 96793. You can also go to our website at www.jccmaui.com and make a donation on our Give page. Or you may choose to give online by way of our secure link that will be posted here throughout the service. Mahalo for your giving to the Lord. All right, hallelujah. Uh, we would like to say mahalo for your givings of your tithes and offering. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and our ushers will get you one. Thank you, ushers, for your dedication. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you can see, our table is walking up here in the front. It's Brother Chad. Thank you, Brother Chad. <laughs> All right, let us bow our heads. Father God, all we can say is thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your blessings and all that you continue to pour out upon each and every one of your sons and daughters here at JCC Maui. And Father God, as we take this time to honor you by giving our tithes and offering, Father God, we know it's for your kingdom, your foundation, and for your glory. So Lord, as we, at this time as we give, we know that in return you will continue to bless us no matter what the situation that we go through in our life that the blessings will always be there. Through our praises, our worship, and our love to you, Father, we give it all back to you in Jesus' mighty name. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready for our message? Yes, we are. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Pastor Aubrey. Amen. Praise the Lord, family. Okay, wait, I'm short, so let me see if this. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see all your faces, and I just wanted to say I'm so grateful to be here and thankful that Bishop Fred and Pastor Zena gave me this opportunity to share the word of God that put on my heart for you guys today. 
Uh, I'm just so grateful. Aren't we so thankful to just be a part of this family? I'm so blessed. Um, can't say enough about it. I'm, I'm growing so much just being here. And then on top of that, you just got the love of God that's being poured out from our people. And it's just, it's so nice. It's nice having Bully and Teal that moved here. It's, it's exciting to see what the Lord is doing in this house. But Okay, here we go. Sorry. Get started here. Okay, so the title of my message today is, Who Told You That? I'm going to read a scripture to open us up. So I'll we'll be in 2 Corinthians, starting at um, chapter 10, starting at verse 3, and I'll read down to verse 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Let me just pray. Father, I just thank you. Thank you for every brother and sister that has joined us today and those that are watching um, over the internet, Lord God, I just pray that you would touch them right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that you would just anoint us afresh. Lord, I thank you for covering us. Lord, we lift up Bishop Fred and Pastor Zena Cubby and for Ciara and Freya on, on Moloka'i, Lord God. Just, just touch them there, Lord. And I know Bishop's bringing a word there, so you, I just speak a fresh anointing upon him, Lord, that the people would just be blessed by our Bishop, Father. And I pray for our people here today that have ears to hear lord i pray that their hearts would just be open to receive not what i'm saying but what you have to say to them this day lord god i pray that we would leave here changed and transformed lord i pray that your word would help us to just search our hearts lord that that we would seek your face lord because we just hunger and thirst after more of you father so i just speak life and blessings over your people in jesus name amen Okay, so I got this title, Who Told You That? At first I was like, oh, and that's how God talks to me all the time. It's like usually in the middle of washing dishes or I could be even in the middle of like scolding my kids. You see, I got four of them. Sorry, people that was in the circle. I don't know. Are we working on the discipline part with those kids? But, um, but God, he speaks, you know, when you recognize his voice, when you spend time with him, it's easy to recognize that it's him that's speaking to you. So honestly, he told me this, this line like five times. And I was like, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I guess that's what I'm sharing. <laughs> um, so let me see. Let me just share this. So as I was studying, um, I realized that it doesn't matter how old or young we are. Saved, unsaved, um, poor, rich, we all deal with thoughts and our thoughts influence our actions and so sorry just being the way i am i went and looked at some some research because we are flooded with thoughts daily yeah i mean sometimes that's that's the hardest thing for me to shut off sometimes is my thoughts because my brain just keeps going but um, the human mind receives an average a total of sixty thousand to eighty thousand thoughts per day so that comes out to an average of about 2,500 to 3,300 thoughts per hour. That's a lot of thinking we do. I broke them down even more. So 41 to 55 thoughts per minute. So some of you guys might be sitting here and you listening to some and then a thought comes in because you're hungry. Or you're thinking of what is open. Yeah. So our mind is so intricate the way God designed it that we can think of gazillion things all at once. <laughs> but I can see why we have so many thoughts. But further research also found that for the average person, out of these thousands of thoughts, 80% were negative. That's horrible. <laughs> okay, and then, and I'm not, I'm not trying to bring a downer word. This is to encourage us today. 95% were repetitive. So it's the same thoughts that you had the day before. Okay, I know I do that sometimes, or a lot. And so what does that mean? We, like, we just basically spend too much time focusing on the wrong things and definitely too much time rehearsing the same thing over and over. Can I hear? Are you? Okay. <laughs> sorry. So if you think about that, sorry, let me scroll. 
the average person thoughts if they are 80% negative then what we're rehearsing over and over is negative thoughts okay and I'm saying we are Christians and so we believe the word of God so we don't fit in this average but then you can understand why there is a dying world out there why there is I mean I have friends that have committed suicide even and I I hate it but you can see how that negative stuff I mean just the talk and if you're rehearsing this stuff in the enemy infiltrates you that way infiltrates your mind that's how you can see that i mean if you're repeating that thing over and over it's like torture in your mind right so i was saying we we have so much thoughts in a day that if we wrote it all down we could actually write a bike a bike write a book <laughs> okay but the question is like who would want to read our book <laughs> I want to reflect on that too because I was like, ooh, out of all the thoughts, if I wrote it down, I don't know. Um, some people's minds work funny, like like my husband's, for instance, might be kind of entertaining to read. But <laughs> but <laughs> for the most part, who wants to read a downer book, right? <laughs> Got a lot of self-help books and things, all kinds of stuff out there. But really, the, the source should always be God and his word. So I'm going to get to that. So let's go to scripture, of course. Because then I was asking the Lord, okay. Who told you that? And where are these negative thoughts coming from? Or in other words, like, yeah, who's telling us this stuff? Yeah. So I'm going to go over four sources that we get our thought, thoughts from. And I'm going to look at a famous couple in the Bible. I'm going to talk about Adam and Eve. Yeah, I know plenty of us say been in church a long time. You guys heard about Adam and Eve even since you were a kid. But we're going to hear it again, okay, because God wants to teach us something new. And I'm believing if you just stay open, God always ministers to you something personal because he is a personal God. Okay, so I'm going to read. This is where we're going to be for a little bit. So if you guys want to turn there, we'll be in Genesis chapter 3. So we're going to look at the beginning, Adam and Eve in the garden. And this is what's the fall of man, okay? We're going to follow that. Verse 3 reads, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit in the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. And those that have done the purple book, we know that, actually I look at it as Eve's mind was already being influenced and her thoughts were already being influenced because god never said to touch it if you go back in in chapter two he never said that he said not to eat it so she she already added to the word okay um so let's go on to verse four so it says you will not certainly die the serpent said to the woman for god knows that when you eat from it your eyes will be opened and you will be like god knowing good and evil when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Okay, so we know that Eve was deceived by the enemy. She eats the fruit. And Adam along with her and they went from being naked and unashamed and you can see that in uh, Genesis 2 25 but they were naked and unashamed to being naked and shamed and here they are trying to sew fig leaves I don't know I never saw fig leaves before but I'm imagining it's like small so <laughs> they're trying to sew fig leaves and I don't know that's kind of funny to me but anyway so but in Genesis 3 they so they eat the fruit let's see they <laughs> i put over here and they go into hiding they sold their fig leaf speedos and bikinis that's what i wrote because that's what i was picturing sorry see my thoughts are not you guys i don't know if you would i stay around him too much so i get influenced okay so in that um in verse seven it says the eyes of both of them are open and they knew that they were naked um what i want to want you to catch is what god does from there so let's read on in verse 9 it says but the Lord God called to the man where are you so let me just pause right there because I love this we get such deep deep teaching and I just want to give props to Bishop Fred because he's gonna be watching tonight Bishop Fred but um right here when we're looking at 
the Lord God. It's the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D God, Yahweh, the personal God, the relational God who's personally involved with us. And he's the one that's pursuing man and he's calling out to Adam. Just like how he called to many of us. He called us out by name. He pursued us. I mean, we got make a choice to to open our hearts and, and receive it, but he does. He pursues us and he calls out to us. And this is the God that we're talking about here. So he pursues. And then let's read on in verse 10 and 11. He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he, meaning God, said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? So I want you to pay attention to that. God does two things. Like I said, he pursued us, and then he pursued man, and he told them, who told you that? Who told you that you were naked? Yeah. So that's what our God, our relational God that pursues us, calls us by our names. He is asking you today who told you that like who told you that you cannot accomplish the vision god gave you who told you you cannot be successful who told you you're not supposed to succeed in things who told you that you're not good enough because it definitely wasn't him yeah and god is saying that today who told you that okay so when you look at the garden really there's only four over there and i'm covering the four voices basically but there's four in the garden so it's an easy example we got adam we got eve god and then there's the serpent right or the enemy let's see but we need to understand that when you look at eve and what she did the thoughts lead to actions and then the actions lead to results okay she heard what was being spoken from the serpent she decided that, okay, yeah, the fruit looks good to eat, and it'll help her gain wisdom. So she goes and eats it. Adam eats it. The result, they wearing their speedo and their bikini fig leaves and hiding, okay? <laughs> All right. Let's see. <laughs> this is the funny part because I, I laugh at what Adam does. We move on to verses 12 and 13. The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. And then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Okay. So just going over that in case you missed it. The first source that was coming through out of all of that was from the serpent or from the enemy. The thoughts that can come in sometimes come from the enemy. Okay. I move on and uh, I want to talk about the days okay t-h-e-y or the other people around you so looking again at Adam and Eve easy to see because only had them two people so if Adam was hearing something and it wasn't God or wasn't the enemy then it was Eve and vice versa right um, for us nowadays we got our spouses we got kids we got siblings we got all our family friends non-friends acquaintances i mean really we got the whole world at our fingertips which is kind of dangerous because we got to be careful what we're allowing to come in yeah i mean we got the internet you can just turn on the tv pretty much got six o'clock bad news all day every day um that's that's how it is <laughs> so me and my husband always used to tease about that like there's always that you know people say oh they say they say um, healing takes time and there's all these things that they say and we're like who's they you know <laughs> we always used to say that before but it's crazy nowadays we gotta watch what they are saying to us because if we don't be careful we can allow that to penetrate again we get the thoughts and then our actions is something else maybe and then the consequences may be something that we really don't want yeah it's too easy and sometimes we we're just so used to it because it's common to be watching the news. I'm on my phone a lot too. I mean, you're watching stuff and you got to really discern who they are and what they are saying to you. So like, for example, I just, and then they could be in your family. So I just want to touch on this a little bit. Okay. So I'm not saying this to brag or anything, but since I was a little girl, 
I grew up with family that, I mean, aunties, uncles, my grandparents, my mom guys always said, oh, you're so smart. When you grow up, you're going to go to college. And that's all I heard since I was like preschool. So what do you think I did after high school? I went to college because that's what I was told and I believed it. I internalized it. Yeah. But imagine someone opposite, maybe. They grew up with family that said, oh, you're not going to amount to nothing. No sense try. No sense try. No sense go school. It's for nothing. For the most part, what do you think happens to that person? be pretty hard to fight those thoughts you know because it's you being influenced and it's a lot of times sad to say that they in our lives are people that are closest to us yeah i mean i had the education side but some of the things that they and my family say is not the healthiest for my spiritual walk either so you gotta watch amen so like i said even the silly things they say may have influence like um they say love is blind or they say the camera never lies, but now they've got filters and stuff, so it totally lies. Because some people look totally different than what I, like some of my classmates, sorry. Because um, I'm like, wow, you know, <laughs> pictures look nice. And I'm like, oh, when you see them in person. Okay, just love you guys. Okay. <laughs> okay, but I'm just saying, there's a lot of us here that need to detach from the things that they say. Yeah, it's it's big influence and we don't realize like especially things that we grow up with I share this a lot with some of the women I I talk to but we don't realize how much that affects us as adults now things that were said you know like I said maybe I was told education wise oh you can do this and now you're smart but I also had a really dark side too that I'm still dealing with now as an adult it's things that God brings to the surface and I realize when the thoughts come up I'm like Ooh, that that's some stink thinking like I got to get rid of that stuff and a lot of it is not to shift blame but a lot of it is things that I feel like you're almost conditioned to think because it's just stuff you grew up with but yeah I just want you guys to be mindful of that and really every time we come here we should be self-examining anyway and of course you don't want to just take my word for it you go to the word um, but I'm just sharing what God's been ministering to me and I'm hoping that it's ministering to you today too okay so we have source number one i said was the enemy number two were the days in our life or the outside voices and then we'll move on to number three and this one's sometimes the loudest one it's our own voice yeah so for me it's the one that's super loud sometimes um and that's because see i internalized a lot of things that god never said i i never got saved till i was in my 20s so I had years of a jumble of things that was said to me, positive and negative, and too many things that I internalize and I walk out in my life and I'm trying to get rid of now. So that's some of the thoughts that we got to get rid of too, is some of the things that come in from ourselves. Like, why do we doubt ourselves? Why do we feel like we're not worthy? I can tell you the enemy was trying to work on me today too, that maybe somebody else should preach today. <laughs> before it was just easy because i just had to just shadow my husband and i never had to talk really i just talked to the youth and was always in private room or whatever i never had to come up in front of anybody but god never called us to stay the same when he teaches us stuff and he processes us through things he wants to use it we just gotta yield to him and so even when it's uncomfortable because it's not always comfortable coming in front of everybody or being on camera but yeah, I got to fight those things every day. And if we honest with our, ourselves, I'm sure all of us fight some things of our own in our own internal thoughts that we need to get rid of. Yeah. Okay. So I said on that one a little bit. But so if you're sitting here and you believe in God and his truth, or maybe you're sitting here because you're just searching and praying and you need something different, this fort source should be the loudest voice and thoughts that we internalize not only in our minds but in our hearts and you know what i'm leading to in the garden adam eve the serpent the fourth source is god and that should be the absolute loudest voice that we're hearing and the only way we can do that i love it what bully shared this morning too we got to worship through it sometimes it's tough and then we should be i don't scold anybody but we need to be in the word we really do because we need to know 
what the truth is because a lot of the things that we believe right now is not true it's not true for our lives isn't it funny how sometimes it's easier to believe for somebody else and not for ourselves i mean take a look at that i i do that all the time like oh yeah they deserve that blessing and it would come to me and like oh I, I don't know yes lord please but i i'm doubting you know why not me why not you yeah so the loudest voice needs to be god's so when we're inspecting our thoughts, rehearsing things in our heads, we should always be asking ourselves, wait, who told you that? <laughs> wait, who told me that? And if the answer is God, then our results will be victory. Yeah. And bully, again, you touched on it. I was so good. I was so good this morning. Thank you. Because that was confirmation for me again, because things aren't always easy just because we say yes to Jesus doesn't mean everything is a like just a walk in the park. There's things we go through, there's trials, but each time he takes us from glory to glory. And every time we persevere, we come out, he does something and shows himself up amazing. Like it's always way better. The good always outweighs the bad. We just got to stick to the truth. That's the problem. When we start feeling ourselves separate not, I'm not talking about all of you. I know Corona, we want you guys safe. I want everybody healthy. But sometimes, if you guys understand even depression, because I've dealt with that, first thing the enemy wants to do is separate you. Separate you from God, really. Because he separates you from people. It makes you isolate. It makes you not want to be around people that can bring an encouraging touch. The tangible touch from God. Yeah, because we are all houses and temples of the living God and we bring power and we can speak life and truth and if you isolate it happens I've been there and just speaking from experience God's voice seriously needs to be the loudest and the only way we can accomplish that is by constantly being in his word because it's almost like you just got to retrain yourself all this filthy thinking that either came from ourself the enemy um, the days in our life that needs to go that needs to go. Yeah, who told you that? Who told you that you cannot? Just, we cannot be living a life, anything short of victory, because that's all that God says is that He declares victory for our lives. Otherwise, why did Jesus die on the cross for our sins? I mean, He paid it all on the cross. And that should be the constant reminder. I know He wasn't there, but I can just. I, I don't know. I cannot even imagine. I'm sure it's even worse than I can imagine. But he paid it all. And I always think about that. Like, wow, if I don't really appreciate what he did for me on the cross, then how am I supposed to live a life of victory? Now, we need to. It always comes back to Jesus. So just as a recap again, I'm just going real fast. Again, who told you that? We learn from Adam and Eve. It's either the enemy, ourself, the days in our life, or God. Okay, so now for me, like I said, okay, I identified the voices. So now what do I do? Because we live in this earth suit. We got to live here. Like I said, we got trials. So what do we do to overcome the thoughts? What do we do? And we, I already talked about being in our word. That's, that's like no brainer. Like my, my son says, no brainer. Sorry. Sometimes my kids get mouthy with us. So it's like our inside joke with my son, but okay. So I'm going to circle back to where we started. I'm going to circle back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'll give you a little bit of background here because this is, for those that do know, it's just a reminder. And for those that don't, I'm just going to share. So this Paul is writing in 2 Corinthians. And this is a letter to the people of Corinth. He had started churches there. Um, and for those that don't know, he, before he was Paul, he was Saul. He was known as Saul of Tarsus persecutor of christians god did a miraculous thing he had a full-on encounter and you can read about that in acts chapter 9 um, but if you follow paul's life and he wrote most of the new testament so i like getting stuff from paul because he'd been through a lot of stuff <laughs> okay and and basically like he wrote a big chunk of the new testament so i think he got a lot that he can share with us that we can we can use but he definitely suffered and he always overcame with victory. And some of the things he went through, oh my gosh, I wouldn't want to go through. Okay. 
if you're interested and you never heard, then go read that. <laughs> read them all. <laughs> okay. So um, in 2 Corinthians, the portion that I'm going to read, the background story is basically there was people that were challenging uh, uh, his credentials. That's the proper way. Us local people said, like, the way I looked at it, okay, people was talking stink about him. Like, he, <laughs> basically, they were saying, oh, Paul, he write all these, like, strong letters, but in person, he's, like, weak and timid, okay? So they was talking stink. So this is, like, his reply, and I really like it, because then you hear some of the human side of him, you know? We're in Second Corinthians again, in chapter 10, verse 1, and now you hear it with that background, knowing that, um, that's what was coming against him. So his, this is his response. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold toward you, went away. <laughs> so he kind of addresses what people was basically talking smack about him. Yeah, like, okay. Um, and verse 2, I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we li live by the standards of this world. Okay. I just like that. Sorry. Wanted you guys to see that he actually addressed, like he was bold enough to address the people that was talking. Okay. So verse 3. For though we live in the world, we do not wage, as, wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Okay, let me go down here. I'm going to break that part down. Verse 3. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. So you guys know this already. We, we, we are peculiar people around here. Not, <laughs> not just because we're weirdos, but God calls us peculiar people. We're a chosen generation for a reason. And we're not the same as everybody else. I told you all the stats earlier about the negative thoughts and how many thoughts come in, but that don't apply to us when we are in our word and we believe in his truth. All I'm saying is that we got to recondition ourselves because we still got some remnants. It's just a reminder to self, self inspect our thoughts. But as believers, we're not the same as everybody else. So we don't live, we live in the world, but we're not going to react the same way. I mean, local style, shucks, if you grew up public school, like me, I mean, even for girls, you got to watch it. Even if you never say something, people come at you, you know. It's like they like throw blows for stuff. And, and I mean, that's, I don't know, it's a Hawaii thing, I, I think. But, um, <laughs> but we don't wage war like that. We don't wage war the same way. That's what Paul is saying. Like, don't tell me he wasn't irritated because he wouldn't, he wouldn't bring it up and he called them out on it. But he said, you know, I, basically, I'm not going to stoop to that because Paul knew who he was. He was grounded in that. Not that he never go through the emotions and the feelings. I'm sure he got upset and ir irritated, but he knew who he was and he knew that he wasn't fighting the war like everybody else. He's not going to go throw blows and he's not going to go talk back and do all these things. Yeah, he addressed it boldly, but he never fight back like that. Okay, verse 4 says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. So our weapons we're equipped with is spiritual guns. Okay, sorry. So all the men with your guns, muscle, it's nice to look at. Nice so that you guys can help weed whack and do stuff or beautify. And when the kids fall asleep, you the ones can lift the stuff. And us women can be like, oh, thank you. Yeah, but <laughs> what we got as Christians is spiritual guns. That's the ones that got power. We got spiritual guns. And the spiritual weapons we have is really where it's at. Because we got the power of the word backing us up. We got the king of kings backing us up. We got an army of angels backing us up. Maybe we cannot see them, but they're around. And they're on assignment. Yeah. We have so much. And that's the spiritual weapons we have. We have a huge arsenal that we don't have to fight the wars like everybody else. It's not the same for us. Even if we get irritated, even if those thoughts come in, I can tell you, I'll be transparent. There's times that some crazy stuff, especially you guys understand this. Okay, if things happen to me, I, I deal with it. I'll let it roll off my back when it happens to my sister or my husband. You know, that's the ones I'm like, whoo, okay. Because the thoughts come in. I used to tease. I'm like, oh, I, I know I'm safe, so... I don't like be caught, so maybe I'll just wear one ninja suit. And then, that's like my joke. I'll go wear a ninja suit and go over there, take care of business, and come back home. 
Nobody gonna know. But no, we cannot do that. We need to be reminded that we have an arsenal and it's spiritual. And a lot of the things that we fight, really when things come against us, yeah, it happens to us in the physical, but there's a spiritual war going on. There's so much behind it. Some people are just hurting and that's why they hurt us. It's spiritual. And so if we know that, what am, I, what am I saying when we're saying we're going to use spiritual weapons? We need to be in prayer. We need to be in worship. We need to be in fellowship. That's how we war. And then we lock shields together. We're warring together. That's how we strengthen ourselves. And I touched on being isolated. That's why we don't isolate. Aside from COVID time because of health reasons. But other than that, it's, we're phone calls away. Nowadays, we can FaceTime. We can Zoom just be attached to the body because you need that sometimes sometimes we have weak moments when the enemy wants to come in but yeah we're not fighting that alone and we got crazy spiritual weapons okay i'm going to continue verse four the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds and i kind of knew what strongholds was but i'm just going to share it. strongholds are anything on which we rely on for security and survival. So you wanna think even like things that we set up like castles and fortresses, but it's fortresses that can be of lies, of negativity, things that take us captive and that can, can make us prisoner if we don't be careful, but that's the power of the spiritual weapons we have. It's powerful that it takes it down, it demolishes it, it crushes that stuff to the ground. And it, um, anything that's really steering our minds and our hearts away is a stronghold, away from God. And that's the stuff that we need to crush. And that's the stuff that sometimes we got to persevere, even though we don't feel like it when we got to pray. We got to speak the word over our lives, even if we're not seeing it right now. That's the stuff that we crush with his word. And that's so powerful. His word is so powerful. We need to believe that it's active in our lives. Yeah. Okay. So verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So pretensions are, again, anything that tries to raise itself higher than God. We got to pay attention. Anything like that. Arguments. We're crushing those too from the spiritual warfare. We're crushing it with our spiritual weapons. We're destroying it. And then taking captive. I think this is important. This is one to focus on. Taking captive every thought and make that obedient to Christ. It always comes back to the cross. That's the only way we accomplish taking that thoughts captive. Because if we're not careful, the thoughts going to take us. We're going to be held captive to thoughts that we shouldn't have. So it always comes back to the cross. And again, what Jesus did for us. Really, it's remembering because of what he did, like, who we are in him. We are his sons and daughters. We get to enjoy his inheritance. We get to enjoy his power on this earth. He gave us so much ability to do things. And sometimes we're immobilized because we've been listening to the wrong thing. Again, who told you that? We listen to the wrong voices. That's, that's really what it comes down to. And God has not given us that spirit of fear. He's called us to live a life of power. He called us to live a life of victory. So anything, you got to just self-inspect. Are there things in your life that's trying to elevate itself higher than God? Are there thoughts that are screaming louder than God's thoughts and his words for your life? Am I hindering what God is saying for my life with my own stink thoughts? We got to take every thought captive and that's just grabbing a hold of it it's really like once you catch that thought and it pops in gotta get rid of it when it pops in it's not that easy and it's not about perfection um, I believe we'll always be under construction because God's always working on us always showing us new things always taking us to new heights and wants to elevate us it's just are we willing to to yield to him and what he's saying for us because it's true for all of us. It doesn't matter if you have a title or not. It really doesn't. We are all sons and daughters, bottom line. Some of us just got a little bit more responsibility and accountability to God. 
but really we all have access to the same loving father we have access to jesus we have access to holy spirit that empowers us to do things on this earth it's who told you that yeah so i want to just say today and encourage you just to confront those thoughts because a lot of them are disabling we got to turn them over to god submit them to god because he's the one that sees all that you can be, you need to catch that. And like I said, not it's not about trying to be perfect. It's understanding that we do fall short. But God loves us. And he wants so much more for us. So if we can just catch his thoughts about us, that's what it is. Catch his thoughts. And what is he saying about you? Because the promises in the word of God is for all of us. Yeah, so be encouraged today. God is calling us to live a life in peace. Like I said, it's okay that we're peculiar. At least that way we, we need to know that we don't have to live in negative thoughts. We don't have to have our 60,000 thoughts and 80% of that being negative. I want 80% of mine being of what God says. And I still got a ways to go. I don't know what percentage I'm at. <laughs> I've been self-inspecting, though, a lot of things that I've allowed penetrate my mind. And, and he still reveals it till now, like I said. A lot of things from family. It's not like your family trying to destroy you, but some things that they speak is not anything close to what God says. We got to throw toss it out, serious. Anything that's contrary to what he says, toss it out. So it's just, shucks, catch it. When it pops in your mind, catch that thing. Hold it, Captain. We're going to take it captive. And how we just yield it to Christ. Yield it to the cross. Remind yourself what he did for you. Remind yourself that you're not supposed to be. I mean, the enemy's under our feet. We're not under the enemy's feet. We live like it sometimes. I do. I, I hate when I'm like that. I had like just recently, even with work, it gets discouraging sometimes. But I, I had one day I was telling people. I had one pity party day honestly because i let the thoughts get to me and i just felt like oh yeah you're right i can't do it <laughs> and then i was like okay that's not what god said and i know where he placed me again it goes back to knowing who you are in him and if you're confident you hear him and he told you to be where you need to be even if things are coming against you that does not matter you need to stand firm and tell yourself and even if you gotta sing to yourself i've done that before i just start worshiping and singing to myself or even when my kids getting me crazy sometimes and i feel like i'm not the best mom because i'm losing it and i think people can hear me yelling like a cuckoo um <laughs> i gotta remind myself no that's not what he called me to be yeah he he blessed me to be a mom it's funny i just realize that there's so much thoughts that come in my mind that I got to get rid of. And I hope you guys can self-inspect too and realize there's so much more that he wants to do in you. And if we can get rid of that stuff and replace it with what God says, man, we're going to take off even more so than we are now. It's going to be insane. Can you imagine if all of us move out according to what he called us to do? I'm tired of allowing thoughts to stop me in my tracks. That's all I can say. And that's what I realize. I'm done. Like if I just need to recognize. Amen. Okay. Sorry. That was kind of long winded, but <laughs> it's pretty much what I have. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just want to encourage you guys. Just, I believe that there's a lot that we're going to be doing in this next season. It's been a challenging season. And if there's a lot of things that can come in, fear, doubt, worry for our family, things like that. Go back to the word. That's the encouragement. When you're feeling like you cannot even handle certain things, go back to what, what he says. He made us more than conquerors. Go back. I would just like pretty much cancel out every negative thought with what he says. That's what I try to do all the time. I'm like, I almost picture like this giant stop sign like, okay, this thought out. I got to. I got to repeat it even what God is saying to me until I get it in my spirit and believe it. Just like how you internalize negative things, we can internalize God things. <laughs> but that takes being in our word, that takes being in fellowship, that takes really seeking him. And it's about relationship with him, 
relationship. It all starts with relationship with Christ because you can't do it on your own. We really can't. It's, I cannot fight physically, but we can fight spiritually, and that brings us way more victory than if we were to do it on my own. No sense argue. Just let God do it, you know, and just trust him in the process. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to pray us out. <laughs> You need to pray? Me? Okay. Well, Father, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for, again, JCC Maui, Lord God, and, and all you're doing, Lord. I pray that you would just speak to your people as we leave from this place, as we part one from another, Lord God. I pray that you would just minister to us, Lord, that we would switch our mindsets, Lord, that we ha would have our minds uh, just fixed on you, Lord, and what your word says for us, what your truth is for our lives, Lord God. Uh, we just cancel out every enemy assignment that has tried to infiltrate our minds and our thoughts, Lord God. You have called us to be victors. Lord, you have called us to new heights and to new elevations, Lord God. And I just want to lift up right now Bishop Fred and Pastor Zena again, Lord. Bring them home from Moloka'i safely, Lord. And I just thank you for uh, the mantle you placed on their lives, Lord. And even all the leaders that are being raised up in this house, Lord, I just lift them up to you. Every single brother and sister in this house, I lift them up to you, Lord. And I pray that they would just seek your face, that you would speak to them, Lord. That you would even show them glimpses of where you're taking them. That they would be encouraged, Lord, to persevere. And when things come at them, Lord, that they would be able to use their spiritual weapons, Lord. That they would be able to praise through the storm, Lord, God. That they would be able to worship, as Bully said, through for their healing, Lord. Worship through every trial, Lord God, and that they would just seek your word and that you would just reveal things to them. Father, I pray that you would even touch our children and our youth, Lord, and, and bless all the teachers and the leaders that are helping them, Lord. Just speak fresh anointing upon them, Lord. And as we raise up the next generation, Lord, help us to be <clears throat> mindful of what we are even teaching them the things that we are speaking to them, Lord, that they would grasp your thoughts for their lives, Father. I just thank you for all that you're doing and continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, all you gotta do is